Hi there, I'm Becky Hammond, founder and strengths maven over at Isogo and isogostrong.com. Welcome to Isogo TV, the video and audio podcast where we are fueling marriage connection, parenting grace, and work energy by focusing in on your strengths instead of fixating on your weakness. Today, you are joining us for episode 77. Now toward the end of our Isogo TV interview series, and this whole thing has just been a blast. By talking to leaders, coaches, parents, spouses, regular people, we are bringing alive the life-changing stories that have been fueled by people's unique and brilliant strengths in their work or their marriages or their parenting. And today's guest is Richard Sterry. Richard is the person behind the Cascade Strengths Reports and the Strengths Twins Initiative. Based in the UK, he has spent most of his career in IT management. Over the years, his focus has moved from the technology side to the people side, where he spent the past five years in a coaching role, enhancing team collaboration and effectiveness in technical environments. Richard now runs his own company, Releasing Strengths, providing technical services to coaches and introducing the Strengths movement in his local church. He has a passion for supporting Strengths coaches and growing the Strengths movement. As I talked with Richard, it struck me that the beginning of his journey is much like what I suspect is true of most of the 19 million people who have discovered their Clifton strengths. They discover their strengths almost by happenstance and then they don't do much with them. Yet then, in his journey, there is a moment that he drives 200 miles to experience and it changes everything. It's inspiring to think that his process and journey could be the path that is meant for you as well. So let's dive into this conversation with Richard. All right, here I am with Richard Sterry. Hello, Richard, how are you today? I'm very good, thank you, Becky. Uh, have I said your na last name correctly? Yes, that's fine. Anything beginning with S, which sounds about right. Yes, that's fine. That's <laughs> Sorry, story. No, no. Richard Sterry. Well, I'm so glad to have you here today. Uh, we have um, just only recently began our conversations together, and um, I love the work that you do and, um, and really the community that you've created around the work that you do. I mean, that's, that's the part that just kind of not only fascinates me, but makes me very um, excited for you and what you're building to help coaches. Um, so I would love for you just to kind of tell us a little bit about yourself. What's your family like? What do you do for work? And then we'll go from there. Okay. Well, I live in the UK, as you may be able to tell from my accent, <laughs> and I'm just outside London. And um, I'm married for nearly 20, 29 years. That's right. Okay. And I've got some um, 23-year-old 23, 23 twins. So one, my daughter got married earlier this year, so that was fantastic celebration. Aww. And both uh, of them have been through um, university. So my son has been through his university and he's now uh, come back to live at home for a few months. So uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, work-wise, I've been in IT for a good 25 years or so. Uh, more recently in the last five years in a coaching capacity rather than a technical or project management capacity. And that's really where I've been working with strengths uh, in that sense. And then 18 months ago, uh, they decided to say goodbye to me. And I thought, right, what shall I do? And mm -hmm. I'm now set up my own company, following my passions and absolutely loving it. Oh, man. And we're going to get to hear a little bit about that journey a little bit and kind of how knowing your strengths played a part in that. So I'm excited to learn more about that myself. Um, so I... I would love for everyone to kind of get to know you a little bit. Uh, what are you most proud of recently? Uh, recently, I would say I'm amazed how I've done something which I think is relatively simple, relatively straightforward, but it's having just a massive impact on so many different people. Uh, and that is my Cascade product. Um, and it's just the, the, the wave it is creating amongst coaches in a positive sense. Um, I'm just a little bit overwhelmed by that, about the magnitude of it. Mm, that's amazing. It's definitely something to be proud of. And I love how you say like, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Like, well, for those of us out there that can't even do a pivot table, um, I would say it's kind of an amazing, uh, an amazing, amazing thing, an amazing resource. So 
kind of, yeah, I'm excited to explore it more as well. I, I've only heard amazing things. So that is definitely something to be proud of. <laughs> mm. All right. Well, let's dive into the strengths perspective a little bit, um, especially the change that it has made in, in the way that you live and the way that you work. And um, I'd love to explore that with you to help people to see, you know, kind of the before and the after. What does life before look like before you understood the strengths perspective and yourself through your own lens of strengths? And then what does it look like after? And, and, and for you especially, like what is that? And then what does that process look like? So that's the journey that we're going to take over the next few right. minutes here. Um, so when you first came across the strengths concept, what problems were you looking to solve or what or encountering and what were you thinking about most in your life at the time? That's a good question. I don't think I was actually looking for any problems to solve as such, mm. but I was going through a whole series of um, curiosity and I had quite a long commute to work. Mm. And um, so I had about an hour to kill every day. So I just started listening to loads of different audio books mm. and got really into the Stephen Covey series and various other uh, books of that sort of thing. And then one day I came across this one. And it was, now discover your strengths. Wonderful. So I thought, okay, let's give it a go. Let's see what it's like. And it absolutely resonated. Wow. And to me, it was just a transformational time. Sort of, hey, there is some sense in the land of uh, confusion that we live in. And actually, the strengths of process seems the way forward. Mm -hmm. And this was way back in 2006, and I, I just thought, yeah, there's something here, but I didn't know what to do about it. I'd taken the assessment. Okay, I've got these five words. What do I do next? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and that's where it laid for a while. So going back to um, your question on what was I looking for, I'm not sure what I was looking for, mm. but I'm very glad that I found it. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> and how were you? How were you feeling at work at the time? Like, were you feeling satisfied, excited, content, or frustrated, down? How did? What did that look like? I was working for a large international organisation, uh, where the head office was in the UK. And I was looking after all the IT systems within the UK offices and things. Okay. So there's a lot of pressure, quite a, quite a big team I was looking after. And there was a lot happening and everything had to be either done now or now, now. Or that yesterday, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> and I like to think about things a little bit and then do something. And yes, there was a certain sense of frustration with that. But in those sort of situations, you just learn to cope. And it is very much a coping mechanism that I was using just to get through it. And maybe my curiosity and my ex exploration was looking for something, uh, almost a way out type thing or a way of coping better with it. Hmm. Oh, that's amazing. And so, you know, when you came across the strengths perspective, did you think, hmm, I wonder if this could help me kind of even from a coping standpoint? Well, I tried to, but as I mentioned earlier, I didn't know how to use it. Yeah. And I listened to that audio book, I don't know how many times, probably about 10 times traveling to work on uh, really? many different occasions, but still couldn't, I can understand the stories, yeah. but I couldn't work out, okay, how can I use these five words that I've got and delve into that and actually make it work for me. Oh man, I love that you just said that because I think that that sums up so many people. You know, I mean, there are 19 over 19 million people who have now taken the strengths finder assessment, but I don't think it's accurate to say that there are 19 million people who are now living their lives through the lens of their strengths. Like I think there is a there's a step in between that goes beyond those five words on the page and even if you just looked at the five words every day, if you don't if it if you can't figure out how to use them, and as Gallup would say, to aim them, then then really you're leaving so much on the you're leaving so much on the table, so much more that could be that could be. Mm. I think it's just, it's yeah a very common um, place that people generally stopped, but but you didn't you didn't stop. So what what did what did you what did you do next? Well, after a few years, I was actually looking for a new role. And I actually had a recruitment agent uh, contact me and said, uh, I know you're looking for a role, Richard. I don't think this is what you're looking for, but I think you'd be really good at it. Mm. So, okay, let's apply for it. Interesting, it, yeah. It, 
it just happened to be in my hometown, so there's no commute. So I thought, okay, well, there's a plus side. Yeah, I was just, already. Well, you're not going to have time to listen to Now Discover Your Strengths any more times, though. <laughs> well, that, that was actually a downside, but it was literally just a five-minute walk, nothing more than that, wow. uh, which was wonderful. Um, and for the interview question, we had to do a presentation on what is talent and how can it benefit the business. Wow. So back to my CD, listen to that, <laughs> put, built my whole presentation on strengths and strengths-based approach. Wow. Not that I knew a huge amount about it, but I thought this has got to be the way forward. Uh, it absolutely resonated with the people who were interviewing me and yeah, I got the job. Wow. Wow. So, so, so that, I mean, so then, then what happened? Now you're, you're, you're speaking this language yet there's still a little bit of a disconnect or exactly so then then as a management team we then took the strength finder assessment again so mm. i took it for the second time got very similar results and um that's where my passion re really reignited for it and that's where i saw okay there's got to be more to it we had um our debrief afterwards was literally just sort of oh these are nice words yeah. and it was about an hour in the group and that was it and I thought, there's got to be more than this. <laughs> and so that's when I discovered the Theme Thursdays. They were just starting. Okay. So I delved into every single one of them. I think it took me about three hours to listen to each one because I took notes meticulously for every oh, single one of those. Oh, my word, Richard. Uh, that's, amazing. That, that's my learner maximizer coming out on that Seriously, one. Seriously, like not only am I going to learn this stuff, I'm going to learn it. <laughs> really did learn that. I got really into it. And everybody on Theme Thursdays was saying, you've got to have coaching. And I was just mm. sensing, I, I need coaching because this is all really good stuff. How can you actually use it? How can you embed it into what you do? How can you yeah. get it to make a difference in your life? Make a difference, yeah. And so I was then searching for a coach and this was back in end of 2014. Okay. And I could only find two coaches in the whole of the South of England who were able to coach me on this. Wow. I thought, okay. And this was having contacted Gallup in the UK and in the US. And uh, so I ended up driving 200 miles just to have a coaching <laughs> session. That is commitment. Like <laughs> that's, that's a belief that coaching is really going to help you make the next step. So, so what was the process like? Well, that was fantastic. It was a two hour session and it was life changing. It was wow. completely life changing because the, some of the themes where I didn't quite resonate with them, I wasn't quite so sure about them. Wow. That's so powerful. I can do so much with that. Wow. Um, and it completely transformed the themes. And the example is uh, with my harmony. Yeah. I got harmony at number five and I thought, oh, can I have another one? I don't, <laughs> well, I don't like this one. I need something different. Did you, think uh, it was, did you think it did describe you or did you think maybe it didn't even describe you? Like when you were kind of resisting it, was it yeah. like, yeah, I see that? Or was it, yeah, I don't even know what that is. There was a phrase in there which says, I think, avoids conflict or afraid of conflict. And... That grated on me because it's probably mm. true and I didn't <laughs> like it. <laughs> um, but what I've learned over the years, just really on this particular part, is yes, harmony avoids conflict, it also, but I need to look at it in a way of reducing conflict. Mm. So sometimes you need to have conflict to get to the calm water to the other side, which is fine. That's healthy conflict. But conflict just for the sake of conflict no i'll avoid that one yeah but it was able to give me okay how can we get through the situation by reducing the amount of conflict in it oh. and what it really taught me was that's just almost a sort of an aside of harmony harmony is just so powerful in the sense that it's looking for consensus it's looking for that overlap of agreement, and it's looking for something that's practical and something that will fit with those two people or the two different areas which are conflicts um, and that was a light bulb moment for me the fact that this is a really powerful theme mm -hmm. and it's one that i've worked on quite a bit since then and it's one that I use an awful lot. And I don't think it's just relating to people in terms of one person conflicting with another. Working in technical environments, mm. it's all about the flow of information through systems. Wow. How easily the information flows through. Are there any um, blockages? Where are the bottlenecks? And that sort of thing. Um, driving on a motorway or a highway, as you probably call them. <laughs> That's um, right. <laughs> where you've got several lanes of traffic and you see sort of 
good half mile ahead, it's all clear, but there's a bit of a hold up where you are, I can immediately spot the car which is causing that hold up. And it's just one of those things I can just identify immediately what's causing that bottleneck, where, why the flow is not happening. That's fascinating because I think a lot of people would identify that type of talent with something more like a strategic thinking theme where they would say, yeah, I'm strategic so I can see the way through. You know, I like to describe it as like as um, lily pads, like a, a frog jumping across yeah. a, a mm. pond. Um, but that's, but instead you're using kind of this relationally based strength in you in non-relational ways that's well i have to really because my strategics right down number 33 <laughs> well there you go see we all have to figure out our way forward and what we're going to do exactly obstacles, right <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh well so okay so you had this you drove 200 miles to a coaching session and those two hours changed everything for you what what would you say if it was different after that coaching session kind of after you really realized how you could start to use these from before? I think the main difference was rather than just sort of reading it and saying, oh, this is very nice. This describes you and sort of this is who you are. It's actually saying now you've got these things, how are you going to use them? How is it going to make a difference in what you're doing? And how can you actually bring them to life and proactively use them? Mm. And what I've learned over various different coaching sessions, and I've had sort of a number through um, peer-to-peer coaching and that side of things, is um, it's a little bit like um, a mixing desk for a band. You've got lots of different sliders and faders for each of the different instruments. Mm. And each of those different faders represents one of my talent themes. Mm. Which one am I going to turn up and which one am I going to bring down for the particular piece of music that's playing at the moment? That's great. And it's being able to take charge of that and being able to take control of that and seeing a situation thinking, ah, this one is going to need these themes, right? Need to focus on these themes. The other themes, okay, we'll just leave those to the side for the moment. But this is what I'm going to play at the moment. And you can actually make a massive difference to different situations and the outcomes can be so much better as well. Hmm. And it's just transformational in that sense. Yeah, uh, that's wonderful. So what, what would you say, if you, had, if you could give us an example or maybe you can think of something, what would you say kind of you had a before and after where you said, okay, now I had this situation that I may have approached like this before, maybe some details about that. And then now that you came to this awareness, this, I love that, like the mixing, like you're the mixer of your own music. Mm-hmm. And I love that. So how, how do you, then what does your ability to having the tools to mix look like in kind of in that same situation or a similar situation after you realize that you can be the mixer of your own music? I think there are just so many different examples, but I'm just trying to think. So there's probably interactions with other people, okay. maybe on, in a time where there may not be that complete agreement or I'm trying to persuade someone to do something or trying to get some buy-in for something or something like that. Yeah. And it's really looking from their perspective, what's going to tick their box? I've got mm-hmm. individualization at number yeah. one. I can work out, okay, is it something very factual that they're going to need? Is it a, an emotion that needs to be met? Um, it, what is it that's really yeah. going to um, trigger their decision-making process? And how can I provide something that's going to respond to that? Yeah. And so how would you have dealt with that before? I would have just charged it in my usual way, saying this is what we're doing. And <laughs> <laughs> it would either work or it doesn't work. Uh, whereas now, it's, it, I've now got a choice, and I think that's what it gives me. It's opened up that, um, that scope and be able to choose. And going back to the mixer scenario, yeah. it's where now I've got the sort of a dozen different faders um, on the mixing desk. Previously, I only had the one master volume. So mm-hmm. now I've, I've got you all those different individual up pieces. Up or down, up exactly, or down. Exactly, exactly, yeah. So I think that's one of the big differences on that. Yeah. So, so you talked a little bit about being proactive versus reactive. So tell me a little bit about that part of your journey. What does that look like when now that you've moved from living your life reactively to now living your life proactively? 
Well, certainly um, 18 months ago, I went through quite a big transition in terms of leaving full-time work and stepping out on my own. Never been self-employed before, never quite sort of sure what's going to happen, um, and a little bit uncertain about what's going to go on with that. And it was actually reading one of my own reports in Cascade that actually triggered me and helped me on this one. <laughs> so I, should, I should read more of my own things. <laughs> and um, what it was, is look at my learner theme. And one of the sentences I have with the Bring Needs reports in there for learner is courage to venture into the unknown. Mm. And that gave me such a confidence. Oh, I can go into the unknown. Right. I have learner. That's going to give me the courage to do it. And before I was just sort of very hesitant about it. I then said, right, I, I took on board the fact I've got learner. How can I use it? It's going to give me this courage to move forward. And I thought, okay, we don't know what's going to happen. Let's enjoy it. Enjoy the journey. Yeah. Wow. And uh, I, how would you say confidence played into that. So now I so you now you know you're leaning on your learner. Uh, to me I guess it just it sounds like you found a way to kind of fuel confidence for that next step. Is that how you Absolutely just- right. Yes. Um it's ha- it's having that confidence in your confidence. Yeah. Um finding a way how you can actually get that confidence and using what you've got to give you that confidence. Mm. So if you, uh, if you would say that there was something significantly different about your life or your work now that you know your strengths and have walked in them significantly, how would you summarize that? Oh, incredibly empowering Mm. Um, in terms of you can choose what you want to do. Uh, One of the things that I do do is that I look at the needs of each of my themes Uh. um, and I make sure I'm feeding them. So my relator needs the one-on-one conversations. And so lots and lots of uh, video chats online that I tend to do. Uh, I go for a coffee twice a week with people, with friends and that sort of thing. Um, I love those one-on-one deep conversations. And so I make sure that my relator is fed with that. Yeah, because that, learn- that could be lonely. I mean, you know, so you, so you step out of a corporate environment where you're around people all the time. You go to your very nicely kept office by your, by yourself. And now you say, okay, I'm going to do this by myself. And then all, all of a sudden you realize like, shoot, I gotta, I gotta have some meaningful conversations with people or I'm not going to be able to show up as my best self. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I've got focus at number 11. I also use, and initially that was absolutely uh, loving the peace and quiet the whole day on yep. my own peace and quiet, absolute bliss. <laughs> um, but after <laughs> after a couple of weeks of that, you think actually I've had enough of this. I actually need some interaction with people, and that's when I really started looking at my themes. Okay, what mm-hmm. do my themes need? How can I feed them so I've then got the the right variety and the right nutrients coming in to then give me what I need? Yeah, I, I love how you just said that because I think even people who have been walking in their strengths for a long time, like I have and like you have now you know, we can catch ourselves like down or depressed or unenergized or in a conflict. And it's interesting how much we have to, we have to remind ourselves to remind ourselves about the things that we teach other people all the time, right? Like, we like do. So, mm. yeah. so you're like in that moment, like, okay, I realize, like, okay, this isn't as energizing as it was. Like my focus was was loving this. And now my focus is like, hmm, hmm, you know, like it's not keeping me on track. What else, what else do I need to, how, how else do I need to build my environment around me so that these things have the opportunity to really thrive? And I, you know, we, it, it doesn't ever, it doesn't ever get old and it becomes a go-to tool. I mean, that's how it has for me, you know, in, in a conflict or um, in a, a moment where I get down here to work and I'm like, ugh. I don't feel like doing this today. What it, it gives me a place I can start. That's just like, well, I guess I'll start over tomorrow. No, I'm not going to start tomorrow. I'm going to see what my strengths, what, what's happening in my strengths, what, what needs they have that haven't been fulfilled um, and see if I can start with that. So I, I love the way that you, that you did that with your relator strength after your focus was, 
was done for a while. <laughs> and I think one of the things it needs is that deep understanding of the strengths. It's not just the naming it, but actually claiming it, claiming all the different facets of it. Each mm -hmm. theme has got so many different aspects to them. Don't just focus on the, the main one, which is there. Right. But focus on all the other th different things it can bring in. Uh, and so, as I described with Harmony, it's not just about that avoiding conflict and getting two people to see agreement. It's mm -hmm. a about flow and, and, and lots of other things as well. Yeah. Yeah. And that takes kind of the next step. It takes, as you say, coaching. It takes um, a daily repeat of that. You know, in my course, Nine Steps to Life Change Through Your Strengths, step nine is you know, spoiler alert, it's, uh, it's put this all on repeat. You know, we have to do this every day. It's not something that we can just go to a coaching session or go to a team training and think, okay, now I'm going to be able to live this way. It's like any habit. Uh, it, mm -hmm. it takes continual processing and then diving deeper into it. And I think also it needs that higher level of self-awareness mm. so that you're actually mm. aware of what's happening to you rather than just following what's given to you. And so it's more about that proactiveness, being more conscious about what's happening, um, actively working out when your best times of the day are for mm. thinking and best times of the day for doing other bits and pieces are, and then using those appropriately. And all that sort of comes together with strengths uh, and so on. Yeah, as a tool to be able to mm. really identify what those different pieces are. Yeah. Oh, very cool. So, okay, drawing from your own personal experience, uh, what encouragement or advice would you give to someone that can kind of, that can resonate with your pre-strengths challenges? You know, and, and like you said, you know, you weren't really looking for anything. So I, I know there's a lot of people out there that, you know, maybe they're not, they're not looking for something or maybe they know their top five strengths, but they don't, they don't feel like they're experiencing any particular challenge. What type of encouragement or advice would you give to someone who can resonate with that? I think in brief summary is get a coach, have uh. coaching. <laughs> uh, I know we keep banging on about it as coaches That's and it right. does sound a little bit as if we're trying to drum up more business, <laughs> but the power of actually getting a coach is just completely uh, incredible. Um, yeah, so I would say get a coach or talk to somebody who knows about strengths, mm -hmm. somebody who knows the themes inside out, who can really help um, bring them to life and then work with yourself to actually do that and bring them to life. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. That's, that's really good advice. So thank you. Thank you for coming here and bringing your story today and uh, for sharing your journey with us that started on your commute with listening to Now Discover Your Strengths 10 times, which I think that is a record. I'm sure it is. I, we should have a vote, but I'm pretty sure that is a record for, uh, for that. Um, and then uh, led through the process of, of having a coach, somebody else to reflect back to you what these things could really do in your life and the strengths perspective it, it could to now being um, an expert yourself and one who provides uh, resources and, and that depth through to the people that are around you in your community. So um, thank you, Richard, for being here today and uh, look forward to the next time we get to chat. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Becky. Really enjoyed today. Thank you. Yep. Bye now. Isn't Richard's story so relatable? Often, we're not really looking for anything in particular. Then something hits and it resonates and we know we should just explore. In Richard's case, it changed the trajectory and confidence in his life and his work. You can find out more about Richard Sterry and his amazing Cascade resource for coaches or managers of teams over at cascadestrengths.com. And this is an amazing product. If you, you should have seen how big his fan club was at Clifton Strength Summit this year. People's coaching practices and the insights they can easily give their clients are being transformed. So be sure to check that out, or you can connect with Richard himself over on LinkedIn. You can also get both of these links and a couple, couple others over in the show notes at isogostrong.com slash isogotv. You know, ultimately, my dream would be to see thriving marriages, families, and workplaces across the world. By orienting our minds toward our strengths, I know we can get there, just like Richard is doing. So I'd love to ask you to share Isogo TV, the video or the audio version. 
with your own circles on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or right there in your home or in your office. And if you like Isogo TV or this interview in particular with Richard, please leave a five-star review over at iTunes. It not only means a lot to me, but it also helps others find this podcast resource too. I'm glad you were here today to hear how others have fueled significant changes in their lives by focusing in on their strengths. And I hope that you join me for more next time on Isogo TV.